Egunon, Kaisho, everybody, welcome back to my daily Euskera practice. We are at my desk in the living room, ready to do some more exercises. But first, I had my BAS class, we got the quizzes back, we got the answers to the quiz that we've been working on. But here's the thing, guys my teacher corrected my quiz, but she didn't actually grade it, which I thought was just like a given. When you have a test, you get a grade. And I realized that I am actually very externally motivated for grades, I guess, because I was the nerd that was like, what? I don't even know what I got. So I went back and I, I gave myself points. I don't even know how much each exercise was worth in terms of points, but I gave everything that I wrote a one point value and I added it all up. I scored myself. I got an 81 out of 112 exercises which comes out to about a 72%. So I don't know how the grading works in schools in the Basque Country. Well, I do know how it works in the French system, but I don't know about like the Basque autonomous community, like the Basque language schools, how they do their grading. But I can tell you right now in America here, 72%, that ain't great. That's a C minus, which um, I was a real, I mean, not to brag, but I was a total A student in school. So a C minus is not acceptable to me. And I wonder if our BAS class had grades and quizzes periodically, like maybe I would actually have learned more by now because I think that really motivates me. Um, but I understand it's a free course and not everybody is as obnoxiously nerdy as I am. So I can see why they don't do grades because I think some people would be very discouraged very quickly. <laughs> So I gave myself a grade of 72%. I'm not super proud of it, you know, given that I did study a little bit for this quiz, but there is the silver lining to it. It did show me like where my weak areas are. There was still some vocabulary that was missing or some vocabulary that like, I think in my brain, I know how it sounds. And then when I wrote it out, it was like very incorrect spelling. And um, I definitely need work with Sertara. There was a whole section of the quiz on Sertara, which like... Um, we, we learned it in class, but I never really went back and like studied it and revised it on my own. So like I have no idea what the endings... Like where, what kind of suffix to use based on like if the word ends in a consonant or a vowel or whatever. Like I totally messed all of that up. So now I know I really should go back and do that but I think I don't mm, focus so much on that stuff or take it as seriously because like at this point like beginner beginner level like I'm just trying to get enough Basque to be vaguely understood like even if it's grammatically incorrect so like if I get the suffix wrong but it's like close to the suffix it's supposed to be like in my mind that's a victory <laughs> setting the bar real low. In my mind, that's like, okay, whoever I'm communicating with will probably understand what I'm trying to say, um, which is kind of what was going on in the last video when I was working on Norekin. Like, I may not get the suffix exactly right, but like, it sounds close enough that like, you understand what I'm trying to say. So I'm sure, you know, over time, I will get more serious and focused with actually getting things right. But right now I'm just like, if I'm in the ballpark, like, doing great, you know? <laughs> which is an attitude I should work on. But some things that I did right in the quiz that I'm really excited about is a lot of the stuff we've been working on more recently in my BAS class. And it's stuff that you guys, if you've been watching, you've seen me working on this in videos. So Etorkizuna, the future tense, nailed it, got everything right in that category. Baldinsa, the conditional, got everything right in that category. And surprisingly, um, there was a whole section where you had to fill in the verb and you had to pick either isan, egon, or ukan. And I've, I've been struggling with knowing when it's isan and when it's egon, to be or to be. Um, and ukan, like, it always takes me 20 minutes to figure out the right conjugation for that. But apparently, I got it right on the quiz. So that tells me that this practice is working, I think. It's, it's helping in that area which is very good news. I got half of my telling time section of the quiz right, which kind of annoys me because I, I have been working on that. Um, but it was like, teacher threw in a curveball. Some of the questions were, what time is it? Ser ordu da. And some of the questions were, ser ordu tan da. At what time is it? And like, honestly, I don't ever remember even learning that. 
we might have gone over it in class like one time six months ago and then never really talked about it again so like i i missed that distinction i kind of answered everything like this is what time it is when some of the sentences i should have said at this time is when things are gonna happen so now i know there's a difference between ser ordu da and ser ordu tan da see the quiz taught me things really and um i did pretty okay I, yeah, I did more than okay on like correcting sentences, which is encouraging. It means I'm learning like what's grammatically correct and what's not. Uh, but I kind of really failed at writing my own sentences. I didn't fail, but I struggled with the verbs and like creating my own grammatically correct sentences, which I know is, is something I need to work on. So overall, this quiz, like it was a pain in the butt, but I think it was good <laughs> that we got that done and I have a little bit of a better idea of what my weaknesses are. So let's move on to the work of today. Today I am continuing more exercises in my Ariane A11 workbook because teacher took pity on us and didn't give us any homework this week. Um, so I'm creating my own homework. The next section I'm working on, it goes through numbers, which I will say I got all of my numbers right on the quiz. Okay, so I'm not worried about numbers. Like when I'm talking, it takes me probably like a 30 seconds delay to work out what the number is, but eventually I get there and I get it right. So I'm not even gonna bother with the numbers for today. Um, then after that, we've got more Ukan, which if you've been following, you know I've been working on Ukan. It seems like forever, like it's always there. This verb, to, to have, is always in everything. I guess it's a common thing to use. So um, I figure today I'll go through just a, a couple of quick Ukan exercises and then uh, we'll see how we're doing on time because I, I have a question I want to answer at the end of this video. So. Here we go. Hopefully I'll be getting faster at this Ukon stuff. Let's see. So we have a bunch of sentences. They're my favorite kinds of sentences. They're like short, three, four words. And the prompt is ser dute, ser es dute. Well, ser dute, question mark? Ser es dute? So what do they have and what do they not have? So the first one, souk, katu blank du su. So one person has a cat. Um, so suk katua dusu. Guk es dugu katu blank. We don't have uh, a cat. Katua. Suk es dusu biloba something. I don't know what biloba is, but you do not have biloba. Do you just leave that? It'd be helpful if I knew what this word was, but I'm not feeling like looking anything up today. So moving on, guk biloba blank ditugu. So ditugu is my clue that it's multiple, whatever this biloba thing is. So I'm going to say guk bilobak ditugu. Hayek chori blank dute. So they have that's one bird because it's not the Tuesday so Hayek Choria Dute Emek Lagoon blank di Tuesday here we got di Tuesday because it's a plural subject already with umeek and then we're gonna have a plural object which is gonna be lagunak umeek lagunak di Tuesday okay and here we go next one is Aditza Yari Inserta el verbo, it says. So, suek alaba blank. Ooh, so there's no verb at all. We're putting that in there. So, suek tells me that this is a plural you. You have one daughter. Plural you. One object that is gonna be du sue. Suek alaba du sue. Nik es blank sheme alabarik. I don't have any children, and I learned that any, anything is singular, so uh, that would be dut. Nik es dut sheme alabarik. Nik ilobak blank. Again, don't know what ilobak 
is, but I know that it is a singular me, I, Nick, and then it looks like it's a plural, whatever your low back is, because it has a K. So I'm going to say Nick Ditut, or Nick Ilobak Ditut. Hayek S. Blank, Katurik. They don't have any cat, so that is a plural subject, singular object. Let's go. D. No. Dute. Yeah, easy. Hayek S. Dute, Katurik. Guk Lagunak Blank. Guk, again, that's we. Lagunak, plural friends that we have. So that is ditugu. <laughs> ditugu. Guk lagunak ditugu. And then suk chakur polita blank. So you, singular, have a pretty dog. That's so nice. Suk chakur polita du su. Boom. Done. I think that was record time. And <laughs> I'm sure you'll tell me whether I even got that right or not. But I'm feeling good about that. Feeling pretty good about that. Um, and I wanted to get through it because at the bottom of this uh, page, there's a whole table explaining things. Badusu. Uh, it's explaining things that I've had questions about in the past on these videos. Is when I see questions written down sometimes in Basque, there's like verbs that I recognize, but there's a ba in front of it. Badusu, badut, baditut, like are the examples here. And I'm always just like, why? What does that even mean? So finally, thank God I have an explanation here. It's in Spanish, so I'm kind of like, it's getting a little technical for my Spanish skills here. But what I'm understanding is you put ba in front of the verb if you're asking if you have any of something. Yeah. Así como con el verbo egon. Para preguntar si se tiene algo normalmente, se antepone la partícula va al verbo. So if you're asking if you have any of something, you'd put va in front of the verb. And then, y se le añade el sufijo ric al objeto. Okay, I don't know what añade means, but... Uh, so I'm getting that the object of that question needs to have a ric. So... I've learned that, I, I've already learned about the rik suffix, saying you have any of something, but I didn't know that there was a prefix for verbs when asking you if, I, if you have any of something. So this is new information for me, very helpful information because I've had questions about this for months. Um, I mean, not seriously enough to like look it up myself somehow, So, but either way, I'm very happy that this is coming up today. So. The example is badasu question mark and then your object, your objecto, <laughs> your object would be uh, having a rik suffix. So their example, badasu chakurik, tienes algún perro? Do you have any dog? In English we would say dogs, but you get the idea. Um, and then to answer, oh, we have ways to answer. To answer in the affirmative, you would put ba in front of your verb for that too. So it says by badut chakura. Yes, I have a dog. But if you want to do a negative response, you, it looks, oh, I was going to say it looks the same. No, it doesn't. In this case, you would put rik at the end of the object. So it says es, es dut chakurik. So, no, I don't have any dog. That makes sense because you'd say, yes, I have a dog. You wouldn't say, yes, I have any dog. Um, but saying no, well, I mean, in English, you could say, no, I don't have a dog. But you could also say, no, I don't have any dogs. So, it makes sense. Let's just do a quick exercise to cement this. New learning. Conjugatu aditzak eta declinatu isenak. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Conjugate the verb and declinatu isenak, whatever that means. I just know it, it puts a suffix on the thing. <laughs> okay, suk ba blank, iloba blank. Oh, there's that word iloba again. I really should learn what that is. Suk 
But, okay, so we've been talking about having things, so I'm thinking I have to put u- ukon, right? Ba du su, and then we have to put rik at the end of the object here. Ilobarik, suk ba du su ilobarik. And then the response is ba nik ba blank, iloba blank. So in the affirmative, you just say, yes, I have a dog, but you put ba in front of Ukan. Okay, so Nik ba dut iloba. That's it, right? You just leave it? Yeah. Um, and then Hiru iloba blank. So I have three of whatever iloba is. <laughs> oh, so then that would be plural. So, sorry. Um, that would be by Nick Baditut Ilobak, since we have three of them, they have three of them. Hiru Iloba, and then and then we're not answering the question anymore, so it would just be a regular ukan, I think. Hiro Iloba Ditut, I think. Eta Hayek Ba Blank, Sheme Alaba Blank. And do they have any children? Oh, is he loba grandkids? I think so. Anyway, it's a hayek ba. So, so they is a plural subject, and then it's gonna be a, a sheme alabarik because we have to put the suffix on the object. Oh gosh, this grammar is so exhausting. <laughs> It's a hayek ba. So, okay, what did I just say? Plural subject, singular object, ba du te. It's a hayek ba du te sheme alabarik. And the answer is, ooh, here's our negative response. Es hayek es, um, I think it would be the same. Es du te sheme alabarik. No, they don't have any children. Boom. Okay, I think I think that was I think that was great for today. <laughs> but what I want to do now is answer a question because I got a comment on a video a few days ago that I thought the question was really interesting. So let me just pull it up here. This comment comes from Robin Phillips. She says she's new to the channel, getting caught up on the videos. Thanks for that, Robin. I really appreciate that. She goes, my question today is would you recommend my learning Castilian Spanish? First, before attempting to learn Ishkara, everyone spoke Spanish when I was a kid, even though my granddad was Basque. They only spoke it when they didn't want us English-speaking children to know what they were talking about. I feel like that is so real, <laughs> Robin, not just in your family, like everybody's family. Um, so I have some vocabulary, but the bare minimum. Same, girl, same. <laughs> No understanding of verb conjugating or grammatical formulation. Dude, I feel your pain. Yeah, that's, I mean, I'm barely scraping by, but I totally started exactly there. All right, so I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Like, you know better than anyone what's best for you. If you wanna learn Castilian Spanish, go for it. If you wanna learn Basque, do that. If you wanna do both, well, good for you. That's great. If, if you're asking, I'm not so sure, maybe you're asking, would it be more useful to, to learn Spanish before learning Basque? Like, do you need to know Spanish to learn Euskara? I mean, if that's the question, like, no. I mean, <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. I mean, I, I can speak some broken Spanish if I try. I understand Spanish when I read it, like, fairly well. Um, so I do find it helpful to know some kind of Spanish if you're trying to learn Basque, because a lot of the... A lot of the learning materials come from the Basque Autonomous Community where Spanish is an official language along with Basque. So like the book that I'm using that I picked up in the Basque country, like all of the instructions are in Basque and in Spanish. So when I don't understand the Basque instructions, I do find it helpful to understand a little bit of Spanish so I can kind of follow what's going on. But that being said, like there's Google Translate, there's tons of things, tools on the internet now that like you can get by. Like you don't need to know Spanish to start learning Basque, especially because there are 
there are materials learning Basque from English, like the Center for Basque Studies at the University of Nevada, Reno. I don't have any of the textbooks they've put out yet, but I do use their Basque English dictionary. And so, and so there are different like instructional materials to learn Basque from English now, which is really great. When I was kind of trying to learn Basque a little bit, like as a teenager, 20 years ago, <laughs> Um, they, yeah, there wasn't too much in English. It was a lot of Spanish. And so I think now it's very possible to learn Euskera without knowing any Spanish. But if you want to learn Castilian Spanish, like, that's, that's up to you. If you want to, go for it. I just don't think it's necessary to know Spanish to start learning Basque. Because anyway, even if you don't have a strong vocabulary in Spanish or know how to conjugate verbs in Spanish or grammar. Like so much about Euskera is so different from Spanish that like I don't think that is a is a mark against you at all. I mean there's some kind of similarities every once in a while if you're looking for them, but like Basque as a language is like totally separate from Spanish. So like if you don't understand how Spanish works, like like that's fine. You'll be okay <laughs> because it's complicated enough learning how Basque works. Um I would say, I mean, don't confuse yourself. Pick a language and run with it. If you want to learn Spanish, go for it. You want to learn Basque, go for it. But some people are, are more gifted with languages. So some people like to learn all the languages. And if that's you, Robin, well, more power to you. Go for it. I appreciate the question. If anyone else watching this has any questions for me, please leave them in the comments below and I may answer it in a future video. If you want to follow along this journey of me trying to learn Euskera the Basque language, you can subscribe to the Hello Basque YouTube channel and check in. I'm doing daily vlogs. You can also follow me on social media at Hello Basque on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So stay in touch, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.